So today, we have a watch that might ruffle a few feathers, and that is the Seiko Alpinist in blue. Now, I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you're kind of already somewhat in the watch community, uh, especially since I'm a small channel. But this watch causes quite a stir because it's limited edition. It goes on the secondary market for way higher than it does on when it's released through either Hodinki or Seiko. So there's a love-hate relationship for this watch for a lot of people. And I'm going to go through, review the watch for what it is, and kind of tell you in the end whether it's worth paying that much over retail or even paying for it, buying it at all, you know. So, without further ado, let's get into the Seiko video. So here we have it, the Seiko Alpinist Special Edition in Blue. Now, very quickly, I'm not going to go into the, really the history of Seiko because I've done that in other videos, so you can look back or <laughs> honestly just search online, it's pretty easy to find. But uh, for this specific watch, it was actually introduced uh, not in this form, but in its original Alpinist uh, connotation in uh, 1961. And it was inspired by mountain men, as there are many mountains in Japan. And basically, they just wanted a nice, rugged watch that can just do anything and go into the mountains with. So, this version of the Alpinist in this kind of specific case style and everything didn't. It was not how it originally started. It looked more dressier. It was more of a of the era type watch. This specific kind of case and dial layout started coming into fruition in 1995 when the brand was kind of like rebooted under the Red Alpinist line. Or it's kind of just called the Red Alpinist colloquially because all the models had Alpinist written in red on the dial. And in 2006, that was the introduction of the Saab series which was the more recent development with the uh, commonly seen, you know, green and gold indices, that dial, the a little more rare uh, cream dial variant and the kind of shark toothy looking black dial. Now we have this model, which is kind of like the new line where they're probably gonna start increasing the price point when they release the new Alpinist. I think that's coming out next year. So, Let's get into this watch specifically. So if I take my calipers, we can kind of get a rough estimate of the case. You can see like the crown guards are very pronounced right here, so it'll be kind of hard to get perfectly the round of the case in this measurement. But that's a pretty good estimate. We're looking at 39.5 millimeter case, maybe 39 millimeters without the crown guard area there. We're looking at a lug to lug of 46 millimeters a lug width of 20, and a thickness of 12. Now overall, I think those are pretty great dimensions. It's nice to have a sub 40 millimeter watch. It's nice to have a pretty compact lug to lug distance, even though they look fairly thin and long. I think, you know, the dimensions are true. You know, they, they wear pretty compactly. And it's just nice to see a watch that's really ergonomic. You can see how much the case curves down. But anyway, into some of the more specifications of the watch, we have the Seiko uh, 6R15 movement in it, which is the exact same movement as is found in the Saab 033 and 035. It beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour. It has 23 joules in it. It has about a 50 hour power reserve, give or take. It has sapphire on the front. It has a closed case back. It is water resistance to 200 meters, which is actually pretty awesome. It has a screw down crown internal rotating compass bezel and that's really what the watch is so let's get into this dial and I guess you can say the dial is what's making everyone go mad <laughs> because this is a limited edition it is in blue it has silver indices and now it's expensive so looking at the dial we have the common alpinist traits we have a nice blue sunburst dial that really catches the light and plays with it in different ways. Different blues come out at different angles. 
we have the silver indices and alternating numerals. We have nice loomed pips on the outside of all the hour markers. And on the very edge, we have, as you can see, this rotating compass bezel. Uh, I'm pretty, it's bi-directional, and I'm pretty sure, honestly, I have no idea how you're supposed to use this. I think in some way you can use it as a compass by putting it on the floor or something. I'm probably completely wrong here, but it's what I think I've heard somewhere before. Uh, we have very nice cathedral hands, which, I mean, although it's not a very common handset, I think it is still a very nice handset. And I think because of the fact that it's not very common, I think it's a nice breath of fresh air to see and watch design. The, the way the dial plays with the light is very nice. At most times, as you can see, especially from this angle right here, it's a very dark muted blue. And certain lights bring out the sunray pattern, help it play, brings out a lighter blue coloration. Uh, there's a striation sunburst pattern, so it really adds to the dimensionality of the watch. We have a nice black date window in here, which while it's not matched to like a blue of the dial, I think even still it's very nicely done. Uh, it stands out less than I think a white date wheel would. So it's a nice design choice overall. But yeah, that's pretty much the dial. So let's look at it in macro. As you can see, it's a very dark and subdued blue texture. Uh, as you can see very much so in that little lighter blue patterning right there, there's the striations. But when it's not striated, it almost looks like there's a grain texture to the blue. It's a very interesting patterning, and I think it's done very well, as I said. The hands, very well done. You can see there's some uh, lack in finishing right there at the top of that cathedral hand, uh, but you know. It's about a $600 watch, give or take. So can't expect the world in finishing. Nicely framed and cut out date window. Very nicely cut numerals. I don't really see any blemishes or marks on them for the most part. So I think those are very nicely done. Loom pips look very nice, clean and crisp. I think most of the blemishes, if any, are found on the handset. As you can see, that the little bar in the middle has some uh, unfinished edges there or imperfections in the finishing. I mean, obviously none of this is visible from the wrist, but it is present in the watch and I'm reviewing the watch, so might as well show it to you. But yeah, overall, very nicely done dial. I appreciate the deepness of the blue, the shininess of the numerals. And I like how in the chapter ring, they really just made use of it and made it a compass bezel rather than uh, just having an empty space or a polished uh, ring of metal. Really cool. Dig that applied Seiko logo too. Has a nice dimensionality and plays off the markers as well. So here we are back with this fairly pretty watch. So talking about the case, which I think is pretty interesting for this watch, you can see we have brush tops, the lugs uh, vertically brushed. Uh, on each, if that focuses a little bit, on each lug. And each lug also has this nice polished chamfer along the side. Very high polish, very nicely done. We have a high polish, even though it's not coming through very well on the camera, but a high polished conical bezel right here, which meets the sapphire that's slightly above the bezel very nicely. And Again, polishing along the end of the bezel right here, which is, you know, a touch that they don't really have to do, but it's nice that they do do. We have just high polished sides with the Seiko S. Uh, nothing really special about the crown on this one. If you look at the watch from this angle, you can tell there's a very spherical nature, a kind of bell shape to the edge of the watch. And you can also tell there's a very nice curve into the case at this angle right here. So it's not just a plain flat side or a plain rounded side, it actually is kind of segmented or into two parts. So it's a nice additional case finishing, something that's an extra step that didn't have to be taken, but it was nice that it was. I think if there was a brush section along the side somewhere to help delineate the line, uh, it would have looked a little bit better, but overall it is still pretty cool. Nice 
knurling on the crown. I think the teeth can be a little finer or uh, have more teeth because sometimes it is a little hard to pull out. Uh, winds nicely, no problem there. Screws in. Uh, this crown is just free at all times. But yeah, overall, a very nicely finished case. As you can see from here, there's a lot of polished sections that stand out to you just from like the wrist and whatnot. Uh, these uh, brush sections are kind of being blown out by the lighting, but uh, when it's on the wrist, you can tell the polished sections from this bezel leads down, and there's a polished chamfer along the side here that also visually comes into view. It's overall a very nice looking watch and I appreciate the detail that they have on the finishing. So now that we're done with the case, let's move on to how the watch wears. So earlier I was wearing my Grand Seiko and I'll talk about specifically why I was wearing this watch a little later. So here we have the watch on my 6.5 inch wrist and as I said, that short lug to lug distance really helps the way it wears. I think it wears very nicely, very compactly on the wrist and Overall, the polish sections, the brush sections, it really comes to life on the wrist and again, I think it just looks pretty good. There is quite a bit of curvature to the case as you can see right there. So, and I think it actually does dip down a little bit below the case back. So that way it does actually hug the wrist, conforms very nicely and it'll work on, you know, straps, bracelet, whatever you decide to put it on, it'll work, it'll look good. So yeah, very comfortable case, wears very slimly even though the dimensions are about 12 millimeters. Uh, the way the case is designed helps it wear thinner than you would think it actually is. And overall very nice on the wrist. So here is the Alpinist stock strap. It is actually a pretty thin and fairly supple, uh, I would say generally pretty decently well made vintage style strap and it is Seiko branded so I'm hoping that maybe Seiko makes better <laughs> better straps like this in the future but I think the color combination of this black or very very dark blue can't really tell I, I want to say it's black but as you can tell the color combination with the blue of the Alpinus I think it looks really nice and overall very good pairing and just nice stock strap that you can use either on this watch or whatever other watch you feel like using it on so getting into the loom, we'll have my Tudor Pelagos on the left, the Alpinus in the middle, and my classic Snoopy on the right. So comparing the Alpinus to the Pelagos, we can see that the glow from the Alpinus actually isn't that bad. It's pretty consistent, very nice glow. I mean, Seiko is pretty well known for loom, so I mean, you'd expect it to be pretty decent. Uh, the Loom on the hands is obviously a greater application than on the indices, so it'll probably last longer there. But yeah, overall decently done there. If we bring it in with the Snoopy, you can see that the brightness isn't too much different. The Snoopy just has a wider area, so it's showing up brighter. But overall, I think the Alpinus is done pretty well. I mean, not a lot of loom. To delineate the hour markers and you can't really tell orientation because there's no differentiation in the pips but still nice so very quickly as i was saying i was wearing my grand seiko earlier and the reason i wanted to wear this watch in this video is that with the inflated prices that this seiko is going at the alpinist specifically uh you're reaching a territory where you should consider other watches than this watch if you're going to pay $1,000 for this Alpinist, you can get a Grand Seiko like this, either uh, pre-single Grand Seiko logo or when they, had, like, when they had the Seiko Grand Seiko or this Grand Seiko variant for between $1,200 to $1,700 used. So that's only a couple hundred more than this Alpinist would be. And for the Grand Seiko, you're getting a better finished bracelet. I mean, a bracelet in the first place a higher level of finishing on the case, crazy, crazy finishing on the markers, the way the dial shines and just the way it looks. I mean, if I bring them close together, I don't know if it comes through as much to you as it does to me, but you can just kind of tell the Grand Seiko is finished to a higher standard. 
and that makes sense because it is technically at a higher price than the $600 MSRP of this watch. But as we all know, that's not really the case. And as this is a limited edition, at some point they will be sold out and probably going for even more of a premium. But anyway, on to my really final thoughts on this watch. So pros and cons of this Blue Alpinist. Uh, I guess basically based off the name, we'll talk about the blue and it's a nice blue. It is a great color. It's a nice dark understated blue that will go with lots of clothing options. It is a sunburst type style, um, but it's not too overly sunburst where it's coming out in every single lighting situation and looking kind of too aggressive, I would say. Uh, I think the case size also is very nice. It wears very well on the wrist. It's very compact. I'm glad it is the size that it is. Basically, I think the stock strap that it comes with is actually very, very nice. I appreciate that especially compared to the stock strap on the regular Alpinist and just Seiko straps in general. So that's a very definite pro. And overall, I think the case finishing is pretty nice for the price point, <laughs> depending on which price point you're paying. Now, the cons. And I think the major con that we should just get out of the way is the price. So they retail for $600 and on the secondary market, you're more likely to pay $750 on the low end uh, to $800 and possibly $1,000. So straight out of the gates for that price, I don't think the watch is worth it. It is a nice watch. It is well built, give or take, for the price. But I think for that kind of money, you can get something better. You can get a Sin 556. You can get something from Damasco. You can go around and get something like a used Grand Seiko for not very much more. If I have my Quartz Grand Seiko, which I showed a little bit against this watch, you can just tell the finishing is another level. The dial works at another level. Uh, it just looks of a higher quality uh, and you don't need the price tags to justify the difference. And once this is selling for so much over retail, you got to kind of start comparing it to the prices or not the prices, but the watches that you'd be getting for at those newly inflated prices. So that's a definite con for the watch. I feel like another con for the watch is the fact that it's a limited edition. I think that if you want a blue Alpinist, you should be able to get one, but that's a little bit more akin to my second point anyway. Uh, another con I think is although the applied numerals and indices are nice, I think at times, and I would say at most times, they look a little muted. Uh, they don't shine quite the way I would like it to shine. It is nice, but I don't think it justifies really necessarily even the $600 price point with some of the dials that like some of these micro brands are doing, honestly. Another con I have is the uh, the loom coloration on the hands, sometimes it's a little green leaning and I feel like that like slight accentuation of green against the blue dial, I don't really love that play in colors, but you know, you can't ask for the world from the watch. Again, even at the inflated prices, it's usually found at under $1,000, so again, you can't ask the world of it. But overall, I think it is a really nice watch. For $600, I think you are completely justified in buying it. Uh, once you start getting into some of those inflated prices, I don't think it's worth it personally unless you just really, really want the watch. Um, you may be better off going with the green version, even though the green is a little more Marmite, but you never know. Just try the watch out. Yeah, I think there's a lot of good elements in the watch. The applied indices are very cool, and I like to see it at that base price point. The uh, compass bezel is pretty, pretty cool. I would like it if it was a little more, um, like if you could make it more stationary like a screw in type crown type thing with it so it doesn't rotate by itself which it does just from wrist movement sometimes so that's a little bit of a knock on the watch but yeah the blue color of the dial the overall case finishing just the way the watch comes together the way it wears i think it is a very nice watch and if you have the watch i'm sure you're going to be happy with it but you know don't pay more than you're willing. And in the end of the day, 
they're just watches uh, and I'm sure over time they'll go down in price a little bit so maybe just wait that out so hope you enjoy the review hope to see you in another one bye